Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, so welcome to the fifth um, ECB Macroprudential Research Conference. Uh, I would like to thank first the uh, co-organizers uh, of, uh, so my co-organizers of this, uh, of this event. And uh, I mean, they are all in the room, Erland, Marcus, Stefan, and, and Angela. So uh, just to give a bit of a kind of background of the questions that we want to kind of explore in this in this conference, you know, macroprudential can be seen as a young uh, policy. So some some people say is a, is a young policy uh, that still needs to be brought to maturity. So uh, some people call it the, the 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 younger sister or monetary policy. Uh, Matt, you can, you can also think of it as a, you know as in the in the fairy tale of um, as, as Hans Christian Andersen, the ugly duckling. So the, so the monetary policy is well developed. Uh, there is a lot of science behind it. You know, macroprudential is still is still developing. So it's still a, a kind of an ugly duckling of, uh, of policy. Uh, so the fact that it's young is actually only partly true. So macroprudential uh, policy, uh, you know, maybe it was not called that way, but as as kind of uh, historical roots. Uh, you know, when I had my first job and I um, did an introduction course in the Italian Central Bank. Uh, the, uh, so one of the things I was told is that one of the objectives of monetary policy actually was to uh, control total domestic credit. So this was the, uh, you know, I was told that this was the key objective of monetary policy. Of course, at the time it was called monetary policy, but today we would probably call it macroprudential policy. And as you know, so many emerging markets have, uh, have done you know, macroprudential policy for, for many, many years. So it was a bit rediscovered after the global financial crisis, but it's not really a, a young uh, policy. And also, we know that this um, um, young sister of monetary policy has been helping monetary policy, uh, you know, also in recent years. We, we, we know that there has been, um, you know, very uh, pronounced monetary tightening in, in the last couple of years, and uh, there was concern about, you know, financial stability risks. And uh, so we know that, among other things, macroprudential policy has helped, you know, making this tightening cycle more, more kind of free of uh, financial stability risks. And I think the vice president this evening will, um, will elaborate on, on this theme. So just to, to kind of go on on this uh, little comparison between macroprudential and, and monetary policy. So we know that monetary policy is, is as one target, you know, price stability, one instrument, and also one independent authority, the central bank running the, the policy. So what about macroprudential? It has certainly multiple instruments. Um, I would say it has also multiple and perhaps unclear targets. So um, there can be also sectoral targets, for example. So, so very, very uh, multiple and killer targets, and also several authorities. Uh, so, in Europe, uh, you know, the the macroprudential policy is is, uh, is particularly, you know, balkanized. I would say with uh, you know with the divisional um, responsibility within the ECB and the national authorities, uh, but it's the case also in other countries. So, there are also other issues in macroprudential policy that we, we still have to fully solve. And the conference today and tomorrow will will go through to some of them. So uh, so we know that macropotential policy tools can may leak. So the primary leakage. So and tomorrow we have a, we have a paper on that. Um, so you know, we we know that uh, we we may have uh, you know a tightening bias. So so we know that some of the macropotential tools are not easy to release. So they are easier to tighten than to release. Uh, and we saw this with the COVID crisis. So the, there was some release of our macroprudential, but most of the capital release for banks, for example, came from microprudential, not macroprudential uh, tools. And, and finally, I would say also there is a, uh, a, you know, a strong competition. I mean, it should be, of course, it is the fact of cooperation, but it's also kind of uh, intellectually competition from, from banking supervision. So, uh, so a lot of the things that we can do in uh, uh, macropru can also be done uh, you know, in the macroprudential setting. So, so the question is also how to make the two cooperate. So, and, and monetary policy does not have really this kind of uh, kind of competitor. Uh, so, should we move in the in the direction of making macro pro a simpler and perhaps uh, you know more more uh, scientific discipline, a bit like monetary policies? I mean, of course, on the one hand, you know, uh, uh, monetary policy is not as scientific as we sometimes think. So, there are a lot of uncertainties also there. Which perhaps are, are overlooked, uh, but it's a question that perhaps I, I, guess, I hope then David will, will shed some light on. Uh, for example, with this objective, you know, I, I believe that David is going to argue that growth at risk, you know, is a, is a possible objective. You know, perhaps I would argue that maybe other valuables at risk, like bank equity at risk, could be equally good uh, uh, objectives. But that is a, is a discussion that that uh, I will today uh, and tomorrow uh, to have. 
Uh, also, another important discussion is how do we measure the stance? So how do we measure the stance of multilateral policy? I mean, I know the IMF has some indicators, uh, but these are very imperfect indicators. Just to give an example, the, 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 um, the loan-to-value ratio, which is a, you know, a key macroprudential tool, you know, may be either you know, very binding or not binding almost at all. You know, it depends on the distribution of loan-to-value ratios in the economy. So, uh, so the same tool, the same level of the tool, say that the loan to value ratio is 0.7, you know, may imply you know, a very tight or a very loose policy. So, so we have to uh, you know, measure that in a more, uh, you know, in a finer way. Um, so while, and also while still searching for a solve for macro pro, uh, you know, new frontiers, new, new topics are, are, are already emerging. So, so uh, we know the liquidity, you know, is going to be uh, um, an, an important um, uh, topic, and, and and we have a paper by Alexi Savov and Kotos tomorrow on this. Uh, MBFIs, so non-bank institutions, also, uh, you know, important for uh, uh, discussion on, on macro pro. What kind of macro pro tools can be used there? Cl in climate, and 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 you know, clearly climate is also an area where uh, macro prudential needs to uh, get into, uh, and we have also on this a uh, paper uh, uh, tomorrow. So let me stop here. Uh, you know how the uh, ugly uh, duckling fairy tale uh, ends. So the the the, the ugly um, duckling becomes a beautiful uh, swan. So let's hope the same will happen with macro national policy. Uh, enjoy the conference, and we look forward to all your contributions uh, today and tomorrow. Thank you.